Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joost. Uh, I was supposed to attend this, this meeting uh, until last week. We received the really unfortunate news of the presenter who sadly passed away last Wednesday. Um, I've been working with the pro project. I know the project. And uh, I've been working with him, uh, with Ruth Habets, who was an uh, application administrator for Blackboard previous to moving to, uh, to Moodle. Um, and he pre prepared the presentation very well. So I'll, I'll try to take you through the slides and talk about how uh, a University of Applied Sciences successfully moved from Blackboard to Moodle. Um, so moving from, to Moodle from Blackboard. First of all, these are the topics I'm going to talk about. Um, what is Zuid University? Um, there's some decision making to, uh, to go through before you can actually move from one LMS to another one. So there's a lot of steps prior to going to, to Moodle. Um, I'll talk about the actual migration, the challenges we faced and how we solved them. And then I'll look briefly ahead to the future, uh, what Moodle will bring for, for this, this University of Applied Sciences when they institution-wide implemented Moodle as their core LMS solution. So let's have a look. Yes, Zuid University is not really a big University of Applied Sciences. They only have 13,000 students uh, across th uh, three campuses uh, in the south southern part of the Netherlands. And one of the comments that struck me most when we started talks with, uh, with the Zuid University team is that they said, we, well, if the, it's, it's about innovation, we're not really front runners. We like to take things easy, look at how things are developing. So now we're in a position where we are actually the first University of Applied Sciences leaving Blackboard for another LMS Moodle. And that's really a big challenge, and it's really interesting to do that. Um, so they have three campuses in Heerlen, in Maastricht, and in Sittard. It's all in the southern part, the province of Limburg. Really laid back people. They only have 1,700 people in staff, uh, of which just over 1,100 are teaching staff, uh, university professors. And then 571 non-teaching staff. Two of those were the application administrators for Blackboard were now taking upon themselves to manage <coughs> Moodle. Well, one of them sadly passed away, but they'll have a replacement uh, when they're ready for that. So they have a lot of programs in the University of Applied Sciences. It's a broad program from healthcare to management studies, hospitality management, international business, uh, IT and communications. They do the lot. And they have all bachelor degrees, some master degrees, programs they teach. So it's, it's really, uh, we say a University of Applied Sciences because they don't focus on fundamental research, they focus on professional career building programs. So they have a long history with Blackboard. They spent over a decade collecting really useful syllabi uh, courses in Blackboard. Uh, as you can see, they had up to 100,000 user accounts in there, so they didn't have the processes yet to, to clean that up, to have just the active user base. They had 44,000 courses in there and well over a terabyte in data on their locally on-premise servers, which poses some ch challenges when you want to migrate that to a software as a service solution in the cloud, as you can imagine. So they had this long contract and decided it was time to leave Blackboard for a new solution. and in, February, in the fall of 2017, they, they opened a call for, uh, for uh, interested parties to, uh, to enter in a, in a contract negotiation. Um, and they had to describe what functional and technological requirements were there. So legal requirements with the GDPR coming into place uh, last May in 2018 was well announced. Uh, there were some functional requirements on behalf of the Zuid University of Applied Sciences, and there was a lot of functional design also already being described. They had a really well-prepared project leader as well, uh, who is a well-known person in the Netherlands in educational technology and sciences. This is what they decided should be their support structure for the project. They have the project board, they have a project manager, 
Um, of course, there's the education and support team, and there's the student support team. And then for all the, the academies teaching the subject matter, they had um, LMS coaches, as they called them, the people who talked to the teachers on how the, uh, the new LMS or any LMS they choose would improve their work uh, on a daily basis. It's ju not just a matter of installing the software and then saying, well, it's there, go use it. We've heard that before. Uh, I think Martin also mentioned that in his keynote, that it's not about the application, it's about what the people actually do with it. And you need some coaching in place, some teaching on how to use the, the activities, the structures to your benefit. So this is what they decided. Um, timeline on their preparation um, is this. In the fall of 2017, the course owners had to uh, list which courses should be left out of the migration for the uh, academic year 18, 19, the, the academic year we're actually in right now. Um, then that was used for preparation, a cleanup of Blackboard, so only the, the useful courses would be there to be migrated to Moodle. Um, then, of course, we did a database to database migration, which is a challenge, and we have really good developers at our, uh, at our headquarters in Eindhoven who took upon themselves the challenge to, to convert a Blackboard course into a Moodle workable course. We tested the migration toolkit in January, um, successful testing, some tweaks, and then in February, we actually moved the entire lot, over 2,000 courses, from Blackboard to Moodle and created them in Moodle with all the course data, the text, the images, the media, the assignments there, uh, everything in preparation for the academic year 18-19, the year we're in. Um, directly afterwards, we started onboarding the teachers. Uh, together with the teaching support staff of South University, we had this onboarding program of four weeks to, uh, to get the new teachers acquainted with Moodle with all the tools, well, the essential tools to manage a course and to get them acquainted with the migrated Blackboard courses in Moodle. Because, well, it's the same content, but it looks slightly different and you can do other stuff with it. So you need to know what to work with. Um, over the course of spring of last year, we also started building the integration. Some of them were really easy. It's just installing and configuring a plugin like Ephorus. But Osiris, um, which is a student information system and enrollment pro platform, is a bit more of a challenge. So it's more of an API kind of integration. We had uh, a SAML2 uh, interface with SurfConnect, which is federated authentication. Um, and of course, one of the requirements was to uh, not only provide with an LMS, but they used uh, the, the, the portfolio functionality of, uh, of Blackboard in some faculties. We have a package deal, we provide Mahara as well and integrate that because the circle of submitting to Moodle, getting it graded and assessed, moving it to your portfolio and then having the portfolio assessed at the end of a year or at the end of your program is a really useful cycle. Um, identity uh, and uh, authentication management, everything was set up so the institution-wide implementation could start by the zero week beginning, uh, well, August 2018. Just before that, we, we promised them not only to move the course data, but also all the evidence of submitted work, graded work, um, the students, had already submitted during their program in Moodle or, or in Blackboard. So they could, could still see it after Blackboard was no longer accessible. So their assignment, last feedback from the, uh, from the teachers is really useful to have uh, when uh, Blackboard got shut down in December last year. Uh, you need access to that stuff. You just can't leave it out. It's, it's a history. You may leave it out eventually, but you need to take it with you. Anything but the kitchen sink, basically. So um, let's have a look at what, uh, what a typical Blackboard course in the Zuid University of Applied Sciences instance of Blackboard looked like. Um, it's a bit more than just a file repository. Uh, things we see in, in LMS is that people put their presentations there, structure a menu, and then that's a course. Um, 
what we have is a, a complex structure for the course in navigation, uh, menus with submenus and tool access, but it's not really a, a pedagogical line of, of teaching. It's just you find your files here, you fi find your forums there, you find your discussions here, here's a webcast. Good luck with that. It's a lot of navigation and it's not, not really in the logic of the student. Uh, some of the Blackboard courses that we had to migrate were well over eight gigabytes in data and they contained large media files. Um, and that's where we, uh, we found this really interesting challenge to have a, a Moodle course format that actually helps access those, uh, those course materials uh, with, a, with an acceptable page load time. So we, uh, we created a course format that's based on, the, I think, the Flex Sections course format. It's called Multitabs, um, which actually does the dynamic page loads only for the sections you're in. Uh, so if you have a course with 70 sections, it will only load section 65 if you were last there and not the other 64, which helps students actively access um, their course materials in the time they need to. Uh, the menu there. Is, uh, is collapsible, so it has sections, subsections, sub-subsections, and it replicates the behavior of a, a typical Blackboard course. Otherwise, in a topics format, this course would be like a, an endless scroll of death going to the lowest, to the bottom section if it's really useful to have there. Um, let's see, final slides. This one we already saw. Some challenges were there, of course. If you have a large implementation, you're bound to run into some interesting stuff. Um, some courses were really slow, but that was because there was a really large size to them. Uh, one program uh, in the uh, music, Bachelor of Music and Arts, had the entire bachelors in one course, including differentiations for teaching or music as a profession. Challenging. Uh, indexing a Moodle site with that much content on it uh, with global search, obviously, if you, uh, if, you, if you start using that, can lead to challenges and uh, occasionally the search bar would crash. We solved that. Also, the sending receiving email functionality from Moodle, we set that up with Zuid University of Applied Sciences, connected it to their Azure Stack mail client, and then it worked as it should. And they're now actively teaching. Um, I'll skip to, through this one because this is, I still have a few minutes left. I'd like to look ahead. Uh, ahead. Um, what they want to do uh, over the next year, they're developing courses that will actively use the competency framework structure. They will uh, also implement more of a connection between Mahara, the portfolio, and Moodle assignments and forums wherever they can, because collecting evidence in today's higher education is more, imp more important than passing a test. Uh, it's a more individual learning route, so it pays to play, pay attention for that. Um, another one is to just get rid of all the unused, uh, unused user accounts that still had to be migrated. But that's, in the larger scheme of things, also a question of having their active direct uh, directory uh, cleaned up and then the connections lost between the LMS and the rest of the applications. That, in turn, will lead to a better used LMS with better results and a happier teaching staff, which in the end is the most one of the most important user groups there. The students themselves are really enthusiastic about it, and it's a total shift from what they were used to in Blackboard. That was my presentation, so thank you very much for your time. And there is some time for questions left. Thank you very much. And I love the final slide, absolutely. So yeah, we can have a couple of questions. Uh, over at the back first, and then, and then Bob at the front, yeah. Okay. Hi, thank you for the presentation. I just want to ask why you did move from Blackboard to Moodle? What was the, the reasons? Uh, one of the uh, reasons was that uh, over the course of time, the requirements for a new LMS changed. Uh, the re organizational requirements uh, uh, put forward that they wanted to do more online teaching, more uh, blended programs, and Blackboard does not, their Blackboard instance was not really facilitating that kind of shift in 
educational approach. So uh, that was one. And the other one was that it's a, it's a tendered uh, uh, contract uh, at, that had been extended for the maximum number of times. So they had to look for new uh, new providers. And Open AD, the company I work for, was the only one there. Okay. And then one final question here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hiya, um, you mentioned uh, the course format that you went with for Moodle. Can you mm -hmm. say what it is again? Because I didn't quite catch it. Well, it's it's called Multitubs, but it's uh, it's uh, one of the things we provide as an extra service for for the uh, for the clients we have. So it's not openly available. Okay. okay so should we? Well. Is it you next? Yeah, okay, you, you have to be the last person. Right, last person, that's right there. Yeah, I just wondered if there was any cleanup afterwards of the courses. We did a, a migration from one database to another, and it was, uh, I don't know if I would do it again, to be quite honest. And also the course format that we ended up going with, we've been stuck with, and we can't really change. So I just wondered, it sounds as though your database migration was very clean, uh, and that there was no cleanup afterward. Well, there was a cleanup before uh, before we migrated. That there was enough time in, in the planning uh, for the teachers to clean up their uh, their attics, basically, and just have the course materials that needed needed to be moved go into Moodle. Uh, a lot of uh, what we moved uh, is actually archived, uh, so it's not actively used in educational programs, but it's there for reference. Uh, and they took the courses we migrated and turned them into fully functional, uh, newly designed courses based on the materials we migrated. Thank you. Thank you very much again. I'm sure you'll be happy to answer any other questions over lunch. And that is the end of this morning's session. We're back here at 1.30, so please come back and listen to some more. And thanks to Joost and everyone. Thank you.